if you're like me, you sometimes make electronics. But they sit around unprotected and unorganized in a random box. Then you have the idea to 3D print a simple case to hold it, but you run into some problems. It turns out that it's not that easy to make a box for electronics. I've struggled with this many times in my past projects. Every option I came up with had some downsides. Well, I created a standardized design that works with breadboards, perf boards, manufactured PCBs, or my CNC boards. All of this with variations, and I'm here to explain how it works, and I wanted to share my models with you. This all started with my name tag that I wore to the Open Source Live conference. The name tag is also an interactive game. And at that time, I sat down and I really thought about what do I want in a case. I wanted it to be as small as possible, portable with a rechargeable battery, of course, but a battery that I can quickly swap out so I don't waste time sitting around recharging the device. I want quick access to the battery without screws. It can easily be over-tightened and stripped. Also, a filament can become brittle, so those holding screw threads aren't going to stay reliable over time. And, of course, you may not always have the right screwdriver on you. So, no screws. My design needs to snap tight and stay together. I want an external on-off switch to alleviate that space on the board so you have one less component. I want multiple options to accommodate for breadboards or PCBs. And I want the shape to be easily scalable and adjustable for various board dimensions. So, first up, this is the battery that I'm going to be using. It's a 3.7 volt rechargeable button cell battery that when charged actually holds a little more voltage, around 4 volts, so that's pretty good. And this charger allows me to charge up to 4 batteries at the same time. So this is great if you're at a conference all day and you need to quickly swap out backup batteries. So now let me show you what I came up with and how to assemble. Well, I first test my electronics on a breadboard, so I trimmed off the sides and I dropped that into the main base that I 3D printed, place in the battery frame, then the battery holder. Then slide on the back cover, and I modeled a small snap tooth that will allow for that satisfying click. Ah, yeah, that's nice. And the switch is small and flush with the print, so it's out of the way, but it's still easy to use. But what if you want a larger breadboard? Well, you're in luck. I made that too. But wait, it gets better. If you need more than 3 volts, swap out the battery frame and holder for the 2 battery holder and almost 8 volts. Which you can step down with the voltage regulator if you need it. Now you can easily take your breadboard anywhere, and you have the power it needs nicely built in. I was just thinking this is a good design if you're a teacher and have multiple students who each need their own breadboard and power. Or if you want to quickly show off pre-assembled electronics that you have for demonstration. This next variation works with most any board. Same thing, drop the board in the base model, but this time you add a spacer, which gives room for your trimmed 1mm of soldering. Then the battery frame. The battery holder will be attached to the board, so it fits tightly in the frame without any wiggling. And it is nice that the switch is small and out of the way, but it is still easy to use. So now you got a nice holder for your board, which could be a video game, a light chaser, a music keyboard, anything you can think of. But what if you need a different dimension? So that's no problem, it's actually pretty easy to adjust. All you have to do is import the file into any 3D software that you like. There are many free options available. And then you find the difference between your board and this board. Then divide that number by 2. And then you grab the outer points and add that offset to each of the sides. So now this model can be 3D printed and will fit your custom board. Now I wanted to make the smallest print possible. And same concept, the board goes in the base, the spacer, the battery, and the snap lid. And this is the first electronic circuit that I ever made. It's just made of simple components with a 555 timer chip, so there's no programming needed. You just arrange the parts in order and this is what it does. The light resistor will change the frequency to the speakers so you can use light to make different sounds, notes, or even music. Okay, it's not the prettiest song in the world, but we've, we've got something. It, it ain't a lot, but it ain't nothing. And what you could do next is design your own custom cover on top of this holder for a cleaner presentation. So this is great for any tiny electronics that you might want for your name tag, cosplay, Halloween costume, wearable lights, audio, a necklace, a watch, maybe a prop for a short film, or a video game prop. And if you need more power, there's a longer design for more voltage. I'll put together a clean diagram that shows the dimensions and all the variations available. So hopefully these prints can help you in your projects, or maybe even inspire you to start making electronics projects. Either way, I just wanted to share what I made with you, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.